You are listening to the 8% Nation podcast, created to help you become a top producer in the insurance industry. Enjoy the show. Welcome to podcast number four of the 8% Nation podcast. This podcast is dedicated to helping you as an insurance agent get into the 8%. Cody, what's the 8% real quick, just for those that are just joining in? It means that 92% freaking fell. It's a sad day. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's a sad statistic, man. It's sad statistic. It super is. But you know what? Stuff like this will help. So today, what I want to break down is I've been getting into some really great conversations with agents across the country. I want to talk about how now is the time to strike in the insurance business all and specifically go into recruiting. Okay, okay. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people that want to grow their teams. So well, yeah, so there, you know, why don't you? So we just got back from Vegas, okay? Um, there was a lot going on in Vegas. We shot a couple podcasts, it was a lot of fun. We scoped out 2020 uh, locations for 8% Nation, which may have some reveals coming soon. Yep. Um, but there was a couple insurance conferences during the time we were there, and there was thousands and thousands of agents at these insurance conferences. Yep. And, you know, there's just something going on in the insurance world right now that I believe uh, recruiting is becoming a really hot button. Yep. So why do you think recruiting is such a hot button right now, Cody? For whatever reason... Recruiting is, I think people feel like recruiting is like their way to earn their way to a, like a, being a seven figure earner eventually, you know? And it's not that I disagree with that because I agree with it, but at the same time, I do think, you know, full transparency, early disclaimer, most agents focus on recruiting people before they know how to spell the word insurance. And, and I think it's easier, I know it's easier. When you have some social proof, when you can lead by example, when you yep. can, hey, look at my commission check where I just made, uh, oh, $11,200 last week. Want to join my team? Like that's easier than, well, hey, you should join my team. Well, how much did you make? I, I didn't make any sales. I recruit, right? Which I want you to sell so I can make more money. Yeah, then yeah, I'll show yeah, you my commission yeah. check. So like, I want people, yes, it's it's a huge opportunity. We are helping a lot of people with, with our marketing for recruiting, but I want them to like, okay, freaking do something first. Yeah. That's yeah. like, don't listen to me, you know, if I didn't make a hundred grand my first year. Well, and, so and if I, if, and if I don't have a, you know, if I haven't built an agencies worth seven, seven figures. Like I know the guys that. that we've talked to that are doing heavy recruiting are all producers and they're monster producers. Yep. So anybody that I know personally of our clients or in our relationship, yeah, they, they have a good little downline built up. Sure. Um, but they, the only, you know, they, it's because they're producing. Yep. You know what I mean? There's some guys that are, we, we, we were just with, uh, we were just, we were just with, you know, one dude in Vegas last week that is a half a million dollar producer himself before he even five, 600 K minimum before he even considered recruiting. Yeah. Which and, is amazing. Yeah. Incredible actually. And, but I mean, I just don't see how you could actually build a good solid team you know, before that, because you got to lead by example, you know. And most people forget that, like, production is key in the insurance world. Yeah. Without production, what what is the point of having a team at all? You know, like Dallas, who who runs a local team, you know, here. It's 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 like okay, if there was no production, why would someone join? Yeah. So the same thing for you guys out there right now. It's like okay. Production is king. When you have production, it's freaking proof that you should be the recruiter. Yeah, I agree totally. Well, you know, that being said, recruiting is still just on fire right now in terms it's of like what heavy. A lot of people are trying, and not only that, a lot of people are succeeding, and a lot of people are joining these teams. That I mean, there's just a lot of recruiting going on right now. Um, and why do you think? Why do you think now is the time in the insurance industry that recruiting seems to be like a really hot topic, hot button, hot conversation? It seems like it's now more than more than it has yeah, been in the past. I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot more transparency in in the industry the last twelve months than there probably ever has been. What do you mean transparency? Uh, I think it's just easier to know what's available and what everyone's doing, and people can show off and show their stuff and message people and send people videos and put stuff online and you know what I mean and I think it's easier 
uh, for someone to recruit someone nowadays. I just think it is. I and, and not all of it's the truth, but. Well, my perception of what's going on, and, and okay, so like I said, full disclaimer, if you're just now finding our brand, Cody's the insurance professional that knows everything insurance, coaching, training. I, I'm more a of the lot, marketing a guy. A lot of insurance, not everything. Well, insurance. But he knows everything about marketing, 100%. Yeah, it all, everything. everything. No, not at all. But uh, I specialize in like the marketing side. I'm not licensed. I'm not an insurance agent, right? right? So my perception of the outside looking in, here's what I keep thinking about. Okay, I hear and I think about this every every day almost. It comes up, seriously, and that's not an exaggeration. Every day in this country, there is 10,000 people turning 65. How crazy is that? Okay, so I don't know if you guys, I, I got my you know, college degree, and they remember, I remember seeing these population charts. Have you ever seen those? Had the, the, yeah. And then what was there? A big, gigantic bulge on the baby boomers. Yeah. Okay, well, the baby boomers are retiring. They're coming of life insurance age in terms of turning 65, Medicare age. They're, they're starting. Annuities, long-term care. It's like, starting to be ridiculous. They still and, have home and auto insurance like anybody, you know. Okay, so there's just this huge opportunity, like, economically on a macro scale. And I'm just, like, there's just so much opportunity. So, you know, whenever we, we've got some of these guys that we work with that are early 20s, making 200, 300 grand a year. And I mean, I love these guys, mm -hmm. but like they ain't freaking, they don't have a bunch of special sauce necessarily. It's just, they have opportunity and they have hustle. Yeah. I mean, you yeah, know what I mean? They, yeah they, they know what to do when they get in front of, how, how to get in front of someone. They use our marketing. They know what to say when they get in front of someone and they just work. Like my point is, is that, you know, not to take anything away from these guys, but like, I didn't think it was possible for a 22 year old guy that doesn't have a college degree to be making multiple six figures. Yep. And that is just an indication of the industry. Yeah. Right? It's kind of ridiculous. The, the, I truly believe that there isn't a better industry on planet Earth. I just Right now, especially. Especially right now. My gosh. Well, and we got done with 8%. Um, and one of the things that um, I was talking to your dad about, who does Medicare, he said, you know, specifically word for word, you know, we've got, we've got like five years of like prime Medicare time. You know, why do you think that it, why do you think he said that? You know, is it just the population deal or is there yeah, something Yeah, it's over the it? next five years. There's like more people turning 65 than like ever in, you know, in the history of our country. It's just insane. And then you look back and, and you don't want to look, look up in five, 10 years and like regret the gold rush. Yeah. You know, per se. Yeah. Well, I was talking to one of my clients last night at like nine o'clock because he's like a friend of mine and we we're just kind of bouncing back and forth and talking about mortgage protection and some other things. And we were just kind of like talking through this whole deal where it's like, you know, now is the, I was thinking like, it, dare I say, this may be a bold statement, but it's like once in a lifetime opportunity right now, you know? And so I'm on the marketing side. And so, you know, the target from the marketing to try and reach turning 65 or, you know, Medicare, you know, type clients, um, it's really like easier than what I was expecting mm -hmm. because the target's so dang large. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's like our Medicare clients. Well, um, everybody's always said it was like the toughest bullseye to hit and that you, you know there's people 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 paying $75 for like you know good medicare leads you know and stuff like this like we hear all this stuff yeah and 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 we're just i mean for call centers agents agencies we're freaking crushing it it's crazy i've got a campaign right now can i say numbers you think or no dude i mean i can't ask the audience cuz we're in a live podcast but i'm good with it okay so i have i have a cl a client that needs uh i mean he needs like 2000 leads a day okay Wow, and we're 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 not there yet um, in terms of the volume because we haven't quite scaled yet. But yeah. we're we're only in eleven states, and I looked at our lead cost. We've got like a bunch of A/B tests going on, and we are at like five dollars and seventy two cents a lead across the country in eleven states. And we started the campaign, you know, a couple months ago, like no big deal. But like, wow, and I, we are going to get to a couple thousand a day. Oh, for sure. And it's like, what? Yeah, you know what I mean, like. It's just kind of like mind boggling that there's this many people. And these are people raising their hand, opting in. These aren't like opening up the iPhone and like playing Bejeweled and like accidentally right. thumbing the I want Medicare. Yeah, yeah. You know, these are like legit yeah. opt in. In fact, he, he told me, I can say this because I don't, we, we're not talking about the client. Once he gets the person on the phone, their call center is a 50% close rate. Wow. 50%. He said his challenge is getting them on the phone yeah. in the first part. And he said w because his dialer was automated, he was only calling every four hours. So he was only to call, he was only, because of the volume, he was only, only able to call once a day. So what he did is, is he said, okay, I'm going to adjust 
my dialer, instead of driving these leads straight into my uh, openers, I'm going to drive them to the marketing people to qualify. And then I'm have them call three times a day, one email, one text. The next day, three times a day, one email, one text. Because if we can get them on the phone, we're mm -hmm. at a 50% close rate. Wow. What do you think about that? Dude, I mean, he's 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 using the touch system too. You know, it's like he, he, and he and he's he's realizing it. Okay, where's the like you always talk about in the marketing funnel? There's like bottlenecks. Okay, yep. there's where's it where's it lacking? Yep. Right. Yep. For him, it's okay. I have the leads. I have the close. I need people on the phone. Yep. Right. So he sees where the opportunity is, and he's adjusting because he's paying attention to numbers and he gets it. Most people don't, most people, a lot of people don't know that stuff. And then they just give up because yeah. they're like, ah, it's just broke. It just sucks. Well, this is one of the largest call centers in the nation. So they, for, they, for a reason, they ain't given up for the reason, but I was impressed. I mean, and once again, this guy, I mean, full disclosure, like this guy is like mid twenties. Okay. <laughs> and I'm late twenties now. So when, like, when we have these freaking podcasts, you make me feel old. <laughs> I know. Every time you old, I'm 35. Dylan, do you feel old yet? Yeah, he <laughs> no, says no, no, no but he feels good. old too. My point is, is that this dude is running a mega million, like multi, multi million dollar Medicare call center, yeah. closing over the phone completely in 11 states right now. And he is the one. It wouldn't surprise me if they're doing, we're not airing out laundry. It wouldn't surprise me if they're doing eight figures, man. Like it's just. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. That's only 10 mil. Yeah. They got, I think. Well, I'm not going to get too far in details. They've got multiple <laughs> call centers. That I, I'm right. sure they're doing more than right. that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my my point, though, is is that I didn't get a call from him that said, well, here's what he said. He goes, he goes, this is a really strong start. He said, at first, I thought, you're, I thought these marketing leads were rubbish. But then we realized that once we got them on the phone, you know, we were able to close them 50%. So my problem was, was contact rate. So they, he said, let's talk about contact rates. So I said, okay, well, I'll use Cody's system because he's the insurance guy. You know, the first day, three calls, one email. Why, why don't you walk, walk through it real quick? Yeah. For best results on generating leads digitally, what's the best result to get someone on the phone? Yeah, I mean, you've got to have six to nine calls in the first 72 hours. And that includes another three texts, three emails. If you get a chance to door knock, it includes that too. Like, I, I love first day. I don't care if I get the lead at noon. You yeah. know, I'm calling at noon, yeah. I'm calling at four, and I'm calling at eight. Like, yep. I'm calling three times, and I'm texting, and I'm emailing, and I'm leaving at least one voicemail per day. Where most agents, and you can look at stats, contact a lead zero or one time. Most agents never make it to two calls ever, Yeah. period. And a lot of times they're paying 65 bucks, 25 bucks, you know, whatever the case is for leads. And then we call them zero or one times, and then we blame the vendor when you just didn't get in contact with them. But this guy, that I can't use his name, gets it. He ain't lazy. He isn't blaming his closers or the funnel. He's blaming, all right, we're not doing enough, you know, and, and he gets it. That, that's where, like, most agents, most agents are just mentally weak, man. Like, it's just. I agree. You know, I don't want to go on a soapbox, but it's like. There's opportunity. Well, so I was talking to another client, right? And so um, he's he booked eight appointments yesterday, eight appointments today. And I'm like, I'm like, the dude's in two days. Wow. He's got 16 booked appointments, okay? You can't, I mean, no wonder the dude is making what he's making. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I know, I bet you most of the agents listening to this right now, okay, either are going to call me a liar, because that's impossible, they'll say, right? Yeah. Or they're because well, they're booking three a week, max. But, but then they're well, they're wondering what's going on. What? Why am I not succeeding or whatever? And it's like you know they're lucky if they get ten appointments a week. You know, which is like monster production for them in their head. And then most, we've got most places that is. And then we've got local agents in local markets that are you know sixteen appointments a day. I mean a, every two days. That's yeah. Bonkers. How do you not succeed? And not yeah, I mean, only that. If, you, if you're setting like, I mean if you're setting twenty thirty appointments a week, if even forty like anywhere in between there. You are going, even 15 for a lot of people, you're going to win. <laughs> you're going to see a return. You're going to make more money, you know, you're, and you're going to make six figures. So if, if there's like an agent out there like, I'm struggling, I don't know what to do. Well, just start by doing more, yeah. and then you'll actually yeah. pick up some more yeah. skill. Maybe you need a bigger marketing budget. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're just not calling leads enough. You know, well, I don't know. But. And one of the other things that was interesting with, with this particular, and this is a little rabbit hole that I'm getting lost in, buddy. Dude, but, it's good, man. But it's interesting to me how his mindset, I mean, of course, this guy makes multiple six figures a year as yeah. an individual producer, no team. Yep. Okay. Um, he told me that of his eight appointments yesterday, he he got stood up by seven. Woo. And he was all smiles. <laughs> all smiles. 
And he's like, hey, man, I just know as an insurance agent I'm going to have these days, and I'm going to come back. That's a really, and, bad, that's a really bad day. No, well, he even said, he said, this is a horrible day. Yeah, it's like, it's like a, that's insane. He said horrible day. But it's like, I'm that much closer to a good day, and it is what it is. I'm going to reschedule him. He even said one of the eight appointments was a referral. And he may sit with seven tomorrow. My point is, is, is that... You know, some people were like, oh, I worked so hard to get the, and I paid for the lead. And, blah, blah, blah. and then they blame the vendor that the person stood them up. Yeah. The vendor has no control over whether they yeah. stick. Yeah. yeah. Like the marketing has, you know what I mean, has, has, has no, and, and I'm sure we're going to, you know, come back to recruiting again too, but we've added a lot of people interested in recruiting on a marketing budget. Yeah. It's been insanity. Yeah. Well, there's just... There's just a lot of opportunity. And I think what's happening is, is I think people are starting to like hear the rumbles and, and maybe you can shed some light on this. What I also feel like is happening on the recruiting side, I'm starting to notice large companies, state farms, all states, some of these guys are allowing their agents to go independent also in some capacity. Is that a right statement? Or maybe not state farm or all state, but maybe some brands. How that used There's to some be brands captive. where you can like sell through like a, brokerage house that they do business with that they have access to you know or something but it just seems like there's they're lo- the captive agencies are loosening up a little bit and there's kind of like a shift at least i've had this conversation maybe i'm wrong i'm not the insurance guy disclaimer sure, sure. right but it, it seems like at the same time there's all this opportunity it seems like there's also a lot of you know carriers or or organizations at the top that are allowing their agents to kind of be more independent therefore they can put contracts with you and you and you and you and or whatever that looks like. Is that a true statement, or am I just like taking two conversations I've had in the last couple of weeks? And like yeah, it varies. It could, it could be. Statement. Yeah, I mean, it could be with certain people. Because um, the big thing is, there's like there's a lot of opportunity out there, and a, and and most people are get trapped in those games where they've got you know contracts with 42 different people. Okay. You know, I'm I'm a I'm like of the different mindset. Let's just like keep it super simple. Okay. If you sell life, let's sell for a couple carriers. Okay. If you sell Medicare, you know, let's find a few key carriers in your market that makes sense. You don't need access to 68 people to sell, you know, because 64 of them are never going to get a policy and they're going to term you for lack of production in six months. You know, it's just like, and then you wasted your time, the contracting time, your uplines time, the company, the carrier's time. It's like, let's just, most people, that's, that's where also too. So I, I always, I always kind of say that agents, um, a lot of times get too far in the weeds or they're like, you know, wait, they're procrastinating. They can also waste a ton of time by saying, okay, I need uh, 72 different carriers. I need to learn about all of them. I'm going to read everybody's brochure. I'm going to watch everybody's video. I'm going to go to everybody's site and I'm going to be expert about everything. And before you know it, oh, by the way, production is still king. And three, three weeks later, guess what? You're still sitting at zero. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question then. So let's just say um, we've got a newer agent that's licensed, that's maybe struggling a little bit, okay? Um, and you just recruited this person, potentially they're on your team, okay? How many hours a week would you suggest they learn and how many hours a week would you suggest they produce in an ideal world? Should they just produce nine to five and then learn in the evenings or what? I mean, you need to spend at least an hour a day towards learning. Okay. E- even if that's sales training, you know, audio books, books, okay. video, videos. May- See, it's kind of, I'm I'm backwards. I, I, I'm I'm gonna get some flack for this, but whatever. It's it's not. It won't be the first time. Uh, I'm not worried about product knowledge or carrier knowledge, because you know there's two there's two activities as a salesperson that pay you money. Yeah. There's two, prospecting and actually selling, as in. I'm looking. I'm 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 looking for someone to get in front of, or I'm sitting there in front of them, closing them. Other than that, you make zero dollars from anything else that you would ever want to do. But most people want to know everything about every carrier, and I I I, I can't like for instance, this is funny. I, I had a I actually had a inch a, a massive life insurance carrier that watched one of my YouTube videos and reached out to me about a year or so ago. Okay, maybe eighteen months ago now. And they said, uh, I, I, I talked about how price doesn't matter on a video. And they didn't like that because they're like, price is important, you know. And they, t- they really took it out of context, though. But what I meant by it is that most agents are so worried about, you know, always selling the lowest price and knowing 42 carriers and, you know, shopping every single time and all this other stuff. The, to be successful, you got to keep it simple. 
and you got to sell on the relationship and the value and f- forget about the price, man. Just just focus on the relationship and the value and, you know, do what's best for people and, you know, good will come. Yeah. Instead of getting in the weeds too far. Yeah. Well, how do you how do you stay disciplined? Because can't you sometimes I've heard this business can be death by a thousand paper cuts, right? You've got questions, you've got underwriting questions, you got phone calls that are coming in, you get customer service, you know, how do you, how do you actually spend all of your time either prospecting or getting in front of people? You got to either get organized and, 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 and ration out your time or you got to, like Ramin said, or you got to ration out some responsibilities and start to build a team or add an admin person or an appointment setter, you know, or whatever. Hey, you turn in my applications, you check my emails, you fill some calls, um, and you set appointments, you know, and what yeah. I do is I, and you manage my calendar. And yeah. I show up and I sell, right? So I always had like, I always had help from a, from callers, appointment setters, admin. Um, even when I was 21 years old with, yeah. with, you know, I had, I always had at least one or two people working for me. Like I just always saw the ability to like build out some staff because yeah. I learned when I'm in front of people, I make money. When I'm sitting there trying to learn about a product or a carrier, I fall asleep. <laughs> And, and and if we've got a lot of agents that come to our trainings and watch our stuff and everything else that like they look for reasons not to sell, even in my own office right now, there's people that look for reasons not to sell. So they'll like fold boxes, you yeah. know, or yeah. they'll turn in applications or they'll read brochures or call carriers. They look for reasons not to do what makes them money. It's weird. And guess what? They don't make money. They don't make money. You know, we were on the podcast, uh, was it Dropping Bombs? It was, with, yeah, with Bradley. Bradley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he dropped a bomb that I actually like, like, love. And I may take it with me for the rest of my life. I'm not I'm not kidding. And I want to kind of break it out. It, it, it is uh, relevant to what you just said. He said most people feel like, well, their first excuse is there's so many hours in the day. Right? I have 24 hours just like you do. Right? So... I ran out of time, right? But he said, no, you don't. You have unlimited hours, mm. right? And I remember we were, I was kind of like, well, okay, what do you mean by that exactly? And he's like, dude, I can pay somebody for their eight hours a day. I can pay this guy for their eight hours a day. I can have an opener. I can have you know, customer service. And I, you have unlimited hours to leverage. I'm sick of that yep. excuse. And that really kind of opened my, opened That's my eyes. That's the number one excuse. Well, I don't have enough time. I got to learn. I don't know. I got questions. I just ran out of time today. Well, what you're doing is you're like laying down and just telling someone to run you over because it's like you have given, you just given up, man. It's it's, it's frustrating to hear too. But it's an interesting thought that you actually don't have 24 hours in a day because you can leverage other people's time and add 24 hours to your day because you got three people working eight hours. Yeah. Even though my numbers are, well, yeah. So look look at the amount of hours we get, you know, with a staff of team of 25. So, so, you know, I, and, and you, I hear all the time, I don't know how you do all that you do with all the content and all the, you know, agency building or whatever. Well, it's because you focus on what you're good at. Yeah. About, that's funny you mentioned that about a year ago, 18 months ago, I started saying, okay, right now I'm trying to do everything. You know, I'm the dude, you know, freaking folding boxes. (laughs) Okay. I'm not saying I'm too good to fold boxes, but you get the idea now I learned, and this was actually, I, I really thought about this a lot on um, actually Bert's retreat on Friday. He's like, I mean, on uh, in, in February. He, he talked about he focuses on creating content. He focuses on thinking about ideas to move the needle, and he focuses on selling. And outside of like promoting and selling, pretty much is those two things, promoting and selling, um, he doesn't do anything else, you know. And so I started adopting that this year. And it's, it's amazing. It really is. Cause I'm like, it's a control. Most people have like control problems. Yeah. I'm one of those people. Yeah. Just don't have people on your team. You don't trust. Yeah. I can give Dylan a you know task and dude, I trust him to get it done. And as soon he's going to do it freaking better than me. You know what else I've found too? I felt, I found that like open and honest communication with your clients and all that is helps a lot of that because mm-hmm. you know, they, they, they're trying to grow a business too. You know, and if you can have an honest conversation to say, like, you know, like, like we had 8% last week or week before last, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then we went to Vegas um, to kind of scout out the next 2020 locations and some things. Um, and so we were crazy busy. And so, you know, there's, I mean, we got, I got blasted 
after yeah. 80%. Oh, gosh. Right? Blasted. In a good way. Yeah. You know, and I just kept telling people, guys, like, you know, please be patient. Like, 8% was a huge success. You know, please be patient. And everyone was like, yeah, I get it. You guys threw a huge conference. It was awesome. But if I would have just, like, clammed up and, like, delegated and tried to get my staff to answer those questions and I kind of, like, clammed up, I feel like my clients would have potentially been like, You're, what, what's what's going on? Like, yeah. we used to talk a bunch and now we're not, you know? So I just feel like communicating helps that quite a bit. Oh, a ton. And that's one of the one of the things you do really well is, like, communication, you know, reaching out, being proactive, texting, emailing, calling, like, yeah. you know, not waiting for someone to uh, – reach out to you a month later? It just helps, I think, it, maintain relationships because the insurance game is the relationship for sure. game, period. For sure. You know, especially when it comes to recruiting. Because, yep. So let's let's bring it back to back to recruiting. So um, what, what time is it? How much time do you think we have? Yeah, we, we've been going about 25, 30 minutes. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, what we can do to help agencies recruit. Okay. Um, so... We've, and I want to give you a plug real quick. Okay. I'm going to interrupt because we, we've been getting recruiting leads all over the country for our clients through Secure Agent Marketing. So we're the extension of their team. We're not a vendor. You know, we're, we're an extension of their team, a partner, to where they're able to build out. We're able to build out custom campaigns for them and drive recruiting leads to them. And a lot of times 100 to 200 recruiting interest a month, which is a lot for not even a big budget, you know like a 1500 box yep. and it's ridiculous how well it's going over. So if you're sitting out there and you're thinking, okay, um, I'm struggling with that and I know it's a big part of my business and I need more of it, delegate it, let Landon and our team funnel you the freak out of people interested in working with you. <laughs> well, wh- I mean, we saw a conference with 8,000 recruit, freshly recruited agents we did. In, w- in one place. Yeah. What? Like yeah. there's something going on. Yep. Okay. And and also I'll tell you, we're able to get these recruiting leads cheaper than I ever dreamed or thought. Yeah. Okay. So it's been an interesting little run where I feel like there's a little honey hole we found mm-hmm. where if you are interested in building a team, if you just allocate $1,500 a month of budget, yep. you will get, I mean, how many leads do you think they'll get for that 1500 Cody? I know the answer. Hey, I mean, it's hundred to 200. Yeah. And it these really are people is. that are raising their hand. On custom that's con- particular that's campaigns. Cons- that's a conservative answer, by the way. I agree. And so, you know, like for instance, like there's interesting things like expansion counties um, that there's particular carriers that have advantages in particular counties. Well, those carriers are going to get you that list of competitive areas, but we can target those specific areas across the country. We can build out campaigns that way. There's lots of ways we can do this. The main thing is, is that you're able to target individuals that are looking for a career change or licensed. I mean, there's just a million ways to go after this. And it's really, I'm having a lot of fun because I believe that my clients truly have a good opportunity for their people they're recruiting. And I'm helping them connect with those individuals, which is a lot of fun, which is why I got into this business in the first place. That's what most people that are, most people that are focused on recruiting and growing their organization struggle with that the most. Yeah. Just recruiting? Yeah. Um, It's a tough, it's a tough nut to crack. It and we're is. cracking it for them. Well, and, and, you know, all we can do from a marketing perspective is get people to raise their hand. And then, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's just like final expense or Medicare leads or anything else. You know, some people are like, man, I just really wish I had more licensed people and wah, wah, wah. Like, you know, or then there's like, man, I got like 150 people. I've already hired six people. I know two are going to turn over. That's okay. It's a numbers game. If their production is this and I'm going to make this, you know what I mean? Like, it's like they're just focused on the end goal. Um, some, some make excuses, some get results. And then let the guys that aren't going to make excuses scoop up this market share Yeah, is really what's going to come down to. All right. So maybe we can end on one little thing. I'd like for you to break down and you, you are the numbers, man. I've seen you get a whiteboard <laughs> out, um, and walk people through this a hundred thousand times, but I've never seen it on recruiting. Okay. So let's do it on what the I spot. Would, no board. What I would like to do is I'd like for you to break down the, the pure numbers from a, I want to get a team of ten under me. What type of agent? Uh, let's call it, let's call it life insurance. Let's, you want to do final expense or Medicare or whatever? Let's just do Medicare. Okay, let's just do Medicare. Okay, that's so fine. walk me through the numbers. If I'm uh, an individual that's trying to grow a team of ten, walk me through those numbers. Yes. Okay. So, so for instance, um, if you wanted to grow to a team of ten, right? So mm-hmm. that's what you're that's saying. That's the goal. Okay, that's the goal. 
So out of that fifteen hundred, we allocate a thousand towards ad spend, five hundred towards management fee. Okay. Okay. So out of a thousand bucks, we're going to get you a hundred to two hundred people interested. Now, if it's a if it's a if it's like a generic, you know, insurance campaign, then then we'll hit those numbers pretty easy. If it's you know, sometimes it's tougher. Okay. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's more specific. Now break down the numbers of if I get a team of ten, if I'm able to hit that goal. Yeah. What do the numbers look like for my in on average? Let's just on my general sort of profit slash production slash, you know, help me understand those numbers. Let's just say that um, whether it whether it takes one or two months, let's just say that we give you 200 people to talk to. Okay. Let's just say you sign on only 5% of them. Okay. So 10. Okay. Okay. So, so out of 10, um, if you can get them, and let's just say that we'll just fast forward several months down the road and you've got like 10 producing. Okay. So if you've got 10 producing, then out of those, you're going to be getting a piece of what they sell. Okay, so, so you're going to get to where, let's just say they're all selling, you know, you can eventually get them to where they're all selling, you know, 20 policies a month. You know, okay. we hear a lot bigger numbers. We hear smaller numbers. Okay, so we'll use that as an example. Then you've got two, at 10 people, you've got 200 pieces of business every month that you're getting a piece of. You know, let's just say every time they sell something, you average about 100 bucks. You know, just a random example. Okay, because they could cross sell, they could add, you know, upsell, whatever. You're looking at 10 grand, Right. No, twenty grand because we're looking at two hundred policies, yeah. right? So you're looking yeah. at really, really, really looking at twenty grand. So, so, so twenty grand, eventually every month that can stack as you grow your team, but you got to have you got to get to where you have ten producers. But let's just say you have to sign on a hundred to get ten producers, ten monster producers, ten or not monster, monster producers, but good yeah. producers. Yeah. Which is which is which is so. Let's just say it takes a thousand people to get to where you have you sign on a hundred and then you have ten that produce. Okay. It may only take us five months to actually hit that target and get you fi- a thousand interested people. And I'm breaking this down better and, and, and deeper than I expected. At that point, you've been with us for five months. You spent 7,500 bucks. We put 5,000 toward the ad spend. And five, six months later, you've got 20 grand coming in every month because of an investment that you spent over the last five or six months of way less about 5% of the actual total revenue that you're going to be bringing in from this campaign. And so that's where the numbers can really get juicy and nice. Yeah. But you got to be willing to invest in your brand and market yourself. It seems interesting that you make it seem easier, but it really actually, those numbers I feel like are like legit. Like they're not, they're they're conservative numbers. They really are. And when we sat down and we have obviously clients that are doing this now, um, you know, we, we sat down and kind of like, was like, they were in charge of what they wanted their cost per acquisition to be. And we just kind of backed into that number. That's how we created this whole thing any, anyways. Yep. And it's weird that we're, we're hitting these numbers and it's, it's, it's fun. I didn't expect us to be doing this much recruiting, recruiting campaign. I didn't. Well, this is, this is so much opportunity. Oh my gosh. And if you can recruit nationwide. Yeah. So like if your business is structured where you can recruit nationwide, you talk about printing, uh, lead cards of people that are raising their hand to be recruited, yep. uh, we can we can pull that off. And there's there's people out there that are earning $100,000 a month because I even know people that are earning $200,000 $200, a month. A month. Like, a month. Because they started <laughs> building their team a few years ago. They allocated a marketing budget towards it. But even m- most importantly, after the budget and they have interest, then they have a back-end system that allows consistent production from their team. And so once they build out this entire thing from, okay, I've got an opportunity, I need people that are interested in it. And oh, by the way, once you're interested in it, I can actually sign you on and I have a proven system to where you do this, this, and this, and guess what? You're the new agent making four grand a week, you know, or whatever, two grand a week, eight grand a week. And that's where they can really start to see results. But if they don't start, they can't do that. And so, okay, we talked about getting to 10 people and maybe it takes five months to grab 10 really good people. Which I don't think it will, by the way, but it Maybe could. not. It could. Yeah. I, I think that's worst case scenario. That's worst case. Like I could grab 10 great people. Well, I know for a fact month, that a lot of our know. campaigns are grabbing, you know, five to six good quality people. Yep. You know, based on what, what's happening. But exactly. Anyways, go ahead. Exactly. So, so let's just say, okay, um, let's just say that you grab, well, let's just use your number then. Okay. Five a month. Okay. That, that, you know, that are that because you may sign on 20 and five may be good, you know, out of the 200 or something like that. And 200 is it sounds crazy, but it's 
it's probably the higher end, you know, as far as amount of quantity of leads, recruiting leads, but it's, it's there. At that point, five, you need, you know, off of our number of 10 to get 20K, you know, whatever that number looks like, if they're good producers, then, then you need, you know, then five will get you 10K. You're one 100. You need, you know, 50 really good producers. And that's and that $100,000 a month. And, and yeah, okay. So you're going to need to take, of that 100 grand a month, you are absolutely going to take a portion of that to build out infrastructure and for support and customer service and all that. Yep. But you, my friend, at that point, have built an insurance agency business that's super successful. A powerhouse that seems massive that's really not. It's really not. Like, I watched. I mean, I mean, I mean people every day making that kind of money in this business. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, and if, okay, so if you've stumbled onto our content and you're like 19, 20, okay, and you're starting to try and We're think. We're 89. Just yeah, if you're trying to think about what you're going to do, I could put you personally in touch with some 22-year-old kids. I say kids because I'm 35, that are making multiple six figures right now. Uncle Landon. And I, it, it's just, now is the time to start. The first thing you got to do is, is do production, right? You got to get yourself to be a producer before you can recruit him, in, in our opinion, right? Or else it ends agree, up being man. like a, hey, go make me money. Yeah. Like, that's weird. And it's not probably going to. People, people are attracted to people that are doing big things. Well, it's just unsustainable. It's really just, re- it's not realistic for you to think that you can not be a big producer and then tell yep. people to produce for you. It's like almost weird. I had three people yesterday that would like to join our office in some way because they're attracted by what we're doing. So that's a perfect example of you need to have an attractive organization. But you said, you mean, what? what's your, did you like work with them? Maybe. Okay. No, I mean, the, well, one's interested in sales team, one's interested in marketing, one's interested in, you know, operations. It's just like, what, one's a buddy, you know, it's just yeah. like, it's just people yeah. reaching out yeah. all the time that are like, oh my gosh, you guys are doing some crazy stuff. I want to hang out and go meet Ray Lewis, you know, and Michael Irvin and, you know, hang out with 2000 insurance agents and yeah. be a part of this sort of startup that I put air quotations on of overnight success that I've been doing it for three and a half years. Yeah. You, you know, you'll get, or, you'll get organic people that'll follow you. Um, but it's not really controllable and sustainable for you to kind of like work your warm market on your recruiting leads. That doesn't. No, no, no. But what I mean by that is it, it's attractive as in when you have people that are looking to join, even from a recruiting lead, they will, they may add you and follow you. Yep. They may not join immediately, but they may join down the road. And guess what? I want to be a part of that. That's a good point. In fact, several of our recruiting clients actually are have a, a branding component as well. And our plan is a six-month deal. So, yeah, a KPI, a key performance indicator for the campaign is going to be lead flow. But there's also drip marketing that's going to go on after that. If anyone is just looking at the immediate return from recruiting campaign, they're missing out on the other pieces of the puzzle yeah, yeah. that are big. It's it's interesting. Well, do you have any final thoughts on, you know, this podcast, this content, this Yeah, we got a call in like eight minutes. But the big thing I would say is, uh, I mean, hopefully this will get somebody thinking bigger about the opportunity whether it be, you know, sales related or recruiting related, we can help with recruiting, you know, great. So you send Landon an email, Landon at secureagentmarketing.com. I think most people forget that there's a ton of opportunity in this business. And most people, it's easy to think small. It's not so easy to think a little bigger. And I want people to get out. That's what I want them to leave with. Like most of them, we do shows and live videos and videos and success society coaching calls and stuff. People leave challenged I like that word better than motivated. They will be motivated, challenged, and they just start thinking a little bigger. And I think that's what it takes. I agree. Well, um, so if you guys, you know, we're, we're uh, I'm loving this podcast format. Yeah, it's fun. So if you guys uh, watching this, if you want to leave a comment on the, the uh, YouTube uh, channel that is maybe a, a podcast topic or maybe an area you want us to talk about, we would love to kind of get into that because... One of the things I'm liking about this format is, and and also I'm noticing on the other podcasts that I'm listening to, and also, you know, guest hosting, it's really an organic, longer form conversation. Listening to your car, and it kind of really lets you see inside the brain of who's who's on there. And I I get a lot of people trying to get as much time with this guy as possible. In fact, Thanks. paying hundreds of dollars to be a part of the Success Society to have access to be able to Facebook group message and say, hey, what do you think about this? And have him personally respond. 
So if you're liking this type of conversation and content, just look into the Cody's Success Society. That's a pretty cool way to get, get direct access. Thanks, um, but, you know, we're, we're looking to just kind of have a conversation together and just kind of unpack because, you know, this today I have five client and prospecting meetings. Tomorrow I've got seven um, client or prospecting meetings. And there's it's amazing how much we learn along the way just talking to these producers because these guys are not small guys. No. You know, and some of them are just now starting. But my point is, is that, you know, how many people are you talking to in the next two days? 15 a lot. awesome producers or, or whatever. Yeah, so it's like, it's least. just fun to like learn from them. And then what this podcast is meant to do is kind of just talk about it without naming names or whatever. And then maybe yeah, and it's it. not scripted, you yeah. know, like a lot of this is just, let's let, there's a topic we want to break down. We want to share something. And a lot of it's just off, off the dome. It just fun. is. Well, thanks for joining us today. Um, man, go out and kill it. Be part of the 8%, not the 92. Have a good afternoon.